Block number 173. Thursday, May 16th, 2024, 7.51 a.m. Currently watching Sports Center. I don't know how long I'm going to sit here for. Maybe like an hour. I got no idea, honestly. Just going to watch Sports Center and I'll update you whenever I do something. I don't know what it's going to be. Talking to Anita Marks on Sports Center. Because they're talking about horse racing. Of course. Of course they're going to bring in Anita Marks. I've never seen Anita Marks on Sports Center before. First time ever. What in the world? I thought Daily Widget was supposed to be live at the uh, golf thing, so why is she still here in Bristol, Connecticut? Loves well, horse racing for some odd reason. As I was gonna say though, why can't she be like this on Daily Wager? She's much less annoying here. Much less annoying. I don't have to mute it. It went from horse racing to actual NBA. I'm talking to Anita Marks about this. Daily Wager has to come on today. I thought Daily Wager was back on today. It's still not? Where's it at? It's still not back? I thought it was today. Oh, great. Talking about Bronny James now. A lot of people think the Lakers might draft Bronny just so LeBron can stay. Four points, four rebounds. Not the greatest performance in the world. I gotta find a way to watch the Mariners games. They made a top play, and I didn't even know it. I gotta find a way to watch these games, man. I don't understand this. Valhalla is today. ESPN Bet Live should be there today because that's what it said. And I know it said from Thursday, unless it's on ESPN Plus. Oh, wait a minute. I think I might, I think I remember seeing something that said that because it's not on TV. Right there. ESPN Bet at the PGA Championship. Nine from 11. It doesn't even say daily wager or anything. I'm not going to watch it for two hours, but there's Tiger Woods. Not bad so far, only up one. I was going to play an MLB game now, but if daily wager starts at nine, I'm wondering though, is ESPN bet, is it everybody? Is it like Tyler? Is it Aaron? It's not Anita because she's still in Bristol, Connecticut. So it's not Anita. I mean, do they literally have, like, the ESPN Bet Live booth there? And it's like, they all just moved and went. I don't even know where Valhalla is, but is that what? I guess I can find out at 9 o'clock. It has to be, though. Unless, of course, it's like they have the booth there and everybody's just, like, kind of joining in from their home studios. I guess I'll find out in 30 minutes. Aha! There it is! I don't know if I'm going to watch this the entire time. But they are, they're in the studio with guest appearances. Yeah, Tiger Woods is the needle. That's probably all they're gonna talk about. They got the caddy on. 16 minutes. Tiger Woods plus 17,500 to win this thing. Yeah, so uh, I don't know if you saw Joe Fortenbaugh. I guess I could rewind it, of course. I love how I can rewind things now. So we got Tyler in the studio. Joe, look at what he's wearing. We got Stanford Steve. I bet they're only going to talk about what is he wearing, man. Joe Forma, what are you doing? He looks so weird in that hat, I won't lie. Uh, I don't know how long I'm going to watch this, if at all. I'll probably have it on while I'm doing stuff, like in the bedroom. I think today's going to be a little bit different. At 9 o'clock, I'm going to go in the bedroom, watch Daily Wager for like 40 minutes. Then I'll go out to the living room. Keep, I'm, gonna, I'm, never, I'm not turning it off. I'm watching this till 11 o'clock. That's what I'll do. And then I'll play MLB. I'll sit in my bed. I just got dressed, by the way. So, sit in my bed for another, like, 15 minutes. I'll go to the bedroom at 9. Joe Fortenbaugh just said, I bet Randy likes my hat. And that Randy said that would he, he would lose that bet. He didn't like it. He doesn't like his hat, man. All right, it's 9 o'clock. I just moved out to the living room, changed the plans. I was going to go in the bedroom. Instead, I'm going to sit out here for 45 minutes. Comes Daily Wager, live from the PGA Championship. Technically, they're not even live from it because they're in the studio, but... Daily Wager, I missed you. Although they're probably not going to talk about any NBA, MLB. It's probably just going to be golf. That's probably all. Daily Wager, put it on the screen. Let's go. Different graphic. This is strange. Oh, it's just an alternate broadcast, basically. Joe Fortenbaugh looks so weird in that hat. 
Going to go sit on the computer now for 45 minutes till 9.45. Watching Daily Wager. Yeah, this is definitely a different kind of show. I mean, I like it, though. I won't lie, I like it. I don't think they're going to be talking about any NBA, though, which is kind of disappointing. Still good to see Tyler. Still good to see Joe Borimba. We're going to talk about Tiger. He's even right now, so not bad. So they're literally doing this live. I mean, they see something. What's this hole going to be? Par, birdie, bogey. Nice. All right, it's 9-11. Although I do love Daily Wager, it, this reminds me how much I do not like golf. I mean, this is very, very interesting, I will say. Like, I mean, the, Joe Forenbaugh is showing you. I mean, he has all this knowledge about everything. And I guess that's why he's basically always on Daily Wager because he knows his stuff. Unfortunately for me, I mean, you can hear him listening off odds galore. What do you think is going to happen next? And back. I mean, he's going crazy with this today. I mean, this is what you expect. He's this isn't he's an analyst. I mean, I guess that's what you expect. But um, this is not ESPN bet that I really like. I mean, I, I always like I mean, I love hearing Tyler and Joe right now, but it's not a usual show of Daily Wager. So since I do not like golf or do not really care about golf all that much. I'm not going to be watching this anymore. I mean, I will probably have it on out in the living room if I go out there again. But I'm going to play some MLB The Show now like I normally do. I, I could put this on my phone if I really, really want to. But right now, I don't really want to. It's golf. I mean, love Tyler Fulgham. Love Joe Formba. Love ESPN Bet Live. But golf... I mean, they're just really talking about golf. It's not something I'm that interested in. So I'm going to play the Xbox now. I think I'm in game four of the World Series. If not, I'll start it. I think that's actually where I am. I'll start the game, game four. And then I will play probably four or five innings. The Xbox is driving me absolutely crazy today. I haven't had to have Wi-Fi play this last couple of days because whenever I tried to go in and connect to the Wi-Fi, it never worked. So I was like, all right, I guess I just don't connect to the Wi-Fi. And today... It will not load. I don't understand this. And what's driving me crazy is I just connected for the first time ever. It worked. And now it's telling me to reconnect again. I just did this Xbox. It literally won't even let me connect. Go online. Why am I not even online? There, I'm connected. Bam, connected. Let's play MLB now. Is it going to let me? Now I got to update now? Oh, come on. How long is this gonna nonsense going to take now? Why does that have to update? Mom, this is going to take forever now. Well, I guess I could go in the bedroom now instead. Gotta be kidding me right now. I've already had like five one-minute clips, so I'm going to stop recording so much because that's way too much. Guess I'll go back out to the computer while this is being done. Watch Daily Wager. Scott Van Pelt makes an appearance. This is like his signature sport. He loves this. I still can't get over Joe in that hat. I mean, imagine this. I mean, this is what he's doing. He's literally sitting in the studio watching this for two hours. There she is, Anita Marks makes an appearance. Basically the whole crew except Aaron Dolan. Aaron Dolan must have the next couple days off because I'm pretty sure this is going to be all they do this week is... I think I think that's what's happening, man. I don't think they're going to do like a normal show. Which is so weird because they stopped doing shows. I would understand if it's like the middle of the summer and there's only baseball on. That makes sense, right? When there's not really much to talk about. But we got NBA playoffs like conference finals games and we're not even talking about it which just as a bizarre thing tiger woods now up plus one that's unfortunate come on tiger let's go joe fortin boss said tiger woods was gonna bogey the second hole lost that bet never bet against tiger man this guy has such a calming voice like he's like actually announcing it he's talking so quietly so calm i shot tiger Tiger Woods can get a birdie here. I like this. Every time he's about to go to the next hole, they say, what's going to happen? Par, birdie. Par is minus 310. He might get a birdie here. Come on, Tiger. Let's go. Come on, Tiger. Get it in. For birdie. Nicely done. Birdie. Nicely done, Tiger. Back at even. All right, it's 9.45. MLB The Show finally got done updating. I'll play three innings of Game 4 of the World Series. I don't think I started it yet. I might have. I don't remember. I'm going to play three innings, and then at 10 o'clock, it'll probably be around 10.10. I probably, I don't know, depending on how long the innings go. Move into the bed. 
probably turn it to Kelly and Mark. I don't know. I could keep watching golf if I wanted to. More than likely, I'll turn it to Kelly and Mark just because golf is the most interesting sport there is. I just had a heart attack. I thought it didn't save my game. Look at this. I have so many different postseasons. If you go to this one, that doesn't have anything there. That's from last time. If you go to this one, look at this. That series, I'm only up one nothing. I mean, that's the, this is the Atlanta series. So if I wanted to, I could go back and switch it if I wanted to. I don't. I'm obviously not going to do that. But I thought it said I was up two nothing and going into game three. I had a heart attack. Thought it didn't save. But luckily, I have like five saved to the same series. There's the three zero series. Zach Wheeler, not a very good pitcher this year. Six point nine two. Satchel Page last time. Why are they pat? Satchel Page just pitched. He's pitching again. What a brutal start to this game. Six up, six down. But I've hit five fly balls to the warning track that I thought were going to be homers. And then the other guy struck out looking on a pitch not in the strike zone. So just brutal so far. Making great contact, but nothing seems to be going right. Might be a long day once again. After doing nothing for eight batters, Joe Morgan had a soft fly ball into right field that landed for a base hit. And then a hit and run executed flawlessly. Joe Morgan was stealing second. Onus Wagner swings. Crushes it into the gap. Joe Morgan scores easily. And the Mariners have a 1-0 lead. Ricky Henderson singles into right field to score another run. Unfortunately, got thrown out at second base. Three hits in a row for the Mariners. And they lead 2-0 through three innings. All right, it's 10.07. Just moved to the bedroom. Turned it to Kelly and Mark. I got my chocolate chip cookie, Powerade, my snacks. What I'm going to do is while I'm watching this for the next hour, I'm going to be in here till 11 o'clock. I'm going to edit the next vlog. It's an hour and four minutes. Going to edit that vlog an hour and four minutes. Probably get done with about 10, 15 minutes of it. Takes a long time. And then once I'm done with that, I move back to my room. They're playing Stump Mark. They say the one of the things is on my last family road trip, we drove for 6,000 miles. She said she went from Illinois, North Dakota, Montana. Look what they look what she says. Montana. Look what she says her favorite spot is. What was your favorite spot? Yeah, it's beautiful indeed, Mark. Yeah, Glacier Park, Montana was your favorite place. It's 10.33, turn it back to ESPN Bet Live at the Masters. It's on for 30 minutes, I'll watch it till 11. Nothing's happening right now. Maybe I will turn it off. I wonder how Tiger Woods is doing. They are going exclusively Tiger Woods today. Oh, that was close. He barely hit the fairway. Oh, that was close. He's on the seventh hole right now. It's just crazy, man, how they're, they're going exclusive Tiger Woods today. The Daily Wager people are betting against Tiger Woods. They did not expect him to play this well. Love to see Tiger Woods still prove people wrong. Tiger Woods, this is for a birdie. If he makes this putt, he'll be one under, which is awesome. It's a long putt. Tiger Woods is looking really, really good today. Here comes Caddy's calm voice. Tiger? Birdie. Tiger Woods is locked in tonight. One under. Tiger Woods. Really good so far. Nine o'clock tomorrow as well. That's going to do it. Daily Wager is officially over. Oh, that was awesome. I mean, Daily Wager was on two hours. I got to listen to Tyler Fulgham and Joe Fortenbaugh for two hours. I wish Daily Wager, I mean, they didn't talk about NBA once, which is crazy because there's huge games all around. Is that Ben, ben Stiller? Love Ben Stiller, man. I'm not gonna go back in my room. I've done editing nine minutes of the video so far, but gonna play the next three innings of my MLB game and then I'll figure out what to do next. I am too good at this game. I just joined in. If you notice, every time you log on to MLB, or not log on, but get on the game, it's playing a practice game that you can either exit or join. I joined just to see what I would do. One pitch, and I hit it out to left field, 432 feet for a homer. Just too good at this game, man. Mike Schmidt was on first base. Joe Morgan crushes it into the gap, and with two outs, Mike Schmidt runs all the way home. Mariners tack on another. It's 3 0 Seattle. They bring in Hal Newhauser, surprisingly, because Satchel Page was only at like 60 pitches when he got taken out. Newhauser immediately gave up a hit. Runners on the corners, one out. Larry Walker, sacrifice fly. 
Mariners lead 4 0 in the top of the six. All right, it's 11 16. I just got done playing three more innings in my MLB game. Unfortunately, the Braves finally scored a run, so it's 4 1 going into the seventh inning. Later, I'll play the seventh, eighth, ninth inning, win the World Series. I might have to turn the difficulty up. There's no way this game is this easy, but turned it to Dora and the Lost City Gold. I obviously will not watch that, but I've never watched it. Nickelodeon, or Team Nick, rather, is going, as I showed you, going crazy. I mean, they're playing Hey Arnold, the Jungle Movie. The really loud house. See, this isn't what Team Nick should be. This is the stuff that should be on Nickelodeon. Team Nick should be those shows that, you know, it's like this. show Childhood shows. So Team Nick should be directed for the teenagers that watch those shows. So Big Time Rush, iCarly, Victorious, even Sam and Cat. What else am I missing out? I'm missing out on a ton. They just need to play more shows, like... I like how they're starting to go with different, like, shows. But, like, you're playing Hey Arnold, The Really Loud House, Dora and the Lost City Gold. These are shows that's, like, Dora is not a Teen Nick show. I'm sorry, even though it's a movie. If you're going to play a movie, play Swindle. I would absolutely love that. But the Speculable Me is on again, so I guess I'm going to watch this just like yesterday because there's nothing else really on. All the MLB games start at 4 o'clock today, except for the Yankees game that's on MLB Network. Could watch that. But it's 11.16. I'm going to sit here editing the vlog until 12.15. And then I'll either move out to the computer or move back in the bedroom. You have to decide that. All right, it's 12.20. I just moved into the bedroom. As I said, for the last hour, I was editing the vlog. I'm going to continue editing the vlog. I'm done with 30 minutes of it. It's 55 minutes long, so 25 more minutes to go. So just over halfway done. And I was just going to say, it's crazy how much faster these vlogs go when it's the it's not all leggy. That's why there's a benefit to edit it all in one sitting rather than editing some, taking a break, and then continue editing later. Because then it's all leggy and everything is really slow. And that's why it always takes so long to get it done. But if you edit it in all in one go, it's always going to be smooth. Unless, of course, the vlog is like an hour and 30 minutes long. And then it's slow from the beginning. And though it's the worst kind of vlogs to edit. But I'm just going to keep doing that. 25 more minutes. Watching Despicable Me still. I'm probably going to sit in here for an hour until 1.20. After Despicable Me ends at 1 o'clock, if I'm in here still, I'm going to turn it on to Impractical Jokers. Hopefully I can edit this vlog, get it done pretty soon, sooner than later. Just going to keep editing. 25 more minutes to go. Watching Despicable Me. All right, it's 1 o'clock. Despicable Me is ending. They're playing the credits. Oh, man. I'm done editing 44 minutes of the vlog. About nine more to go. My head is really starting to hurt. I mean, this is I've done this for the last two and a half hours. Time to turn it on to Impractical Jokers. As I said, I'll sit in here for about seven more minutes. I don't think it's going to be done. I really don't think the vlog is going to be done. The truth hurts. Oh, wait, that was last episode. Psychotic Knotline. I don't think I've seen that one. Nice. Practical Jokers it is. Are they going, oh, they're going with the early episodes today, aren't they? Season two, or I guess that's not it. Season two, episode nine. You can even see how darker the screen is. See how the screen is darker? Yeah, even the announcer is different. Then, okay, whatever. It is what it is. You can see your 20 minutes, continue editing the vlog. Hopefully I can finish, but that doesn't seem likely. No way, I'm watching this episode of Impractical Jokers, like I said. He just said, prepare for something amazing. That's what the voice is every single intro of the new intro is. It's prepare for something amazing. This is the first time I've ever watched this episode because I don't, I've never seen this episode before. I can't believe that. I got about three minutes left of the vlog edit. I should be leaving. It's 1.20. I should be leaving going in my room. I'm just going to finish off the vlog. It's going to take about five more minutes. Then it'll finally be done. This is the voice from the intro. Prepare for something amazing. All right, it's 1.42. I just got done editing the vlog, made the thumbnail, uploaded it to YouTube. That was just brutal, man. Absolutely brutal. While it uploads, I'm going to play the final three innings of the World Series game. Three innings to go. Time World Series champs. Mariners aren't done scoring yet. Ricky Henderson crushed a double into the gap to start the inning. It went over the fence for a ground rule double. He then stole third. Mike Piazza double... Into the right field gap. Mariners aren't done scoring quite yet. With a runner on second base, I used a pinch hitter. Willie Mays is last at bat as a Mariner. Coming off the bench, I made sure to substitute in both guys. Mark McGuire was on the bench. Willie Mays was on the bench. I pinched hit for both Clemente and Larry Walker so they could have one final at bat. And with a runner on second base, Willie Mays hits it into left field. Mike Schmidt. 
It was a close play at home, but he was ultimately safe. Another RBI for Willie Mays. It's 6-1 Mariners. Onus Wagner makes sure the Mariners get one more home run in this magical postseason run. His sixth on the year straightaway center field, 416 feet. You knew that was gone the moment it left the bat. Absolutely perfect swing. And Onus Wagner gives the Mariners a 7-1 lead. Absolutely crushed. It's 2-0-2. That is going to do it. The Seattle Mariners have won the World Series. Zach Wheeler, who had a six-point-something ERA coming into this game, struggled mightily. Flawless tonight. Nine innings, one run, four hits. Only had like 86 pitches. So he was very efficient all night long. And the Seattle Mariners, dominant throughout this entire postseason, only lost one game. What a postseason it has been for this team. I might have to switch up the difficulty next time. Zach Wheeler, you can see what he did. He was just phenomenal. 11 strikeouts, no walks. One last look at the bracket. What a dominant run. I started off my run against Boston, won that series easily, 4-0, swept it. Then it was on to Minnesota. I somehow lost to Minnesota one game. I don't know how. Still won it pretty convincingly, though, 4-1. to And then the World Series, it was not a contest. Seattle was just dominant. 12-1. That was unbelievably dominant. Now... Let's thank everybody for their services. Starting off with the catcher position, number 31, Mike Piazza. Mike Piazza played in 13 games, 55 at bat, 16 runs, 21 hits, 6 homers, 16 RBIs, batted 382. Everybody on this team was absolutely dominant all year long. Mike Piazza, thanks for your services. First baseman, number 3, Harmon Killebrew. Harmon Killebrew played in 12 games, 53 at bats, 8 runs, 20 hits, 4 homers, 13 RBIs batted 377. This was one of the only differences I had between this team and my other team. Instead of Edgar Martinez, I had Harmon Killebrew, and he did not disappoint. Thanks for your services, Harmon Killebrew. And first baseman, number 25, Mark McGuire. Mark McGuire played in nine games, 22 at bats, seven runs, six hits, two homers, four RBIs, batted 273. He was always the DH position. I think there was one game, the one game that Harmon Killebrew did not play in. Mark McGuire started that game, but every other game he was designated a hitter, going back and forth between him and Larry Walker. Mark McGuire. Thanks for your services. Second baseman number eight, Joe Morgan. Joe Morgan played in all 13 games, 54 at bat, 16 runs, 23 hits, eight homers, 18 RBIs, 10 stolen bases, batted 426. Joe Morgan was another guy, started really slow, but oh man, did he pick it up. He was dominant to end the season. I mean, he started off slow the first four games, and then after that, it was just dominance. 10 stolen bases. When he got on base, it was a guaranteed steal. Stole third a couple times. I think he had one or two triples. It doesn't list that stat here, but Joe Morgan, dominant. Thanks for your services, Joe Morgan. Third baseman number 20, Mike Schmidt. Mike Schmidt played in all 13 games, 51 at-bats, 11 runs, 15 hits, 4 homers, 11 RBIs, batted 294. Mike Schmidt, thanks for your services. Shortstop number zero, Onis Wagner. Onis Wagner played in all 13 games, 60 at-bats, 19 runs, 24 hits, 6 homers, 17 RBIs, 12 stolen bases, batted 400 Onis Wagner was another guy. Once he got on base, he was going to steal bases. He had a couple triples as well. Onis Wagner, thanks for your services. Left fielder number 28, Ricky Henderson. Ricky Henderson played in all 13 games, 62 at-bats, 18 runs, 26 hits, 4 homers, 12 RBIs, 12 stolen bases, batted 419. Ricky Henderson was the king of stolen bases. I mean, every single time he got on base, he was stealing it, no matter if he was at first, second, he was a stolen base wizard, and that speed really, really helped me out in a lot of games. So, Ricky Henderson, thanks for your services. Center fielder, number 99, Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge played in 13 games, 60 at-bats, 17 runs, 26 hits, 10 homers, 20 RBIs, batted 433. Once again, Aaron Judge was batted cleanup for me every single game. He showed a ton of and ton of power. Just like last time I played this game, Aaron Judge led everybody in batting average. And once again, he had a dominant batting average as well. Aaron Judge, 10 homers. Pretty sure the only guy to hit double-digit homers. Aaron Judge, thanks for your services. Number 26, Willie Mays. Willie Mays only played in three games. Had nine at-bats, one run, four hits, no homers. 
two RBIs batted 444. Willie Mays was the other guy that kind of got left out. I mean, I DH'd him, Mark McGuire, Larry Walker. Those were all guys that were DHing to Willie Mays. Only played in three games, but he was really solid for going four for nine, two RBIs, a run. Willie Mays, thanks for your services. Right fielder number 21, Roberto Clemente. Roberto Clemente started 12 of the 13 games, 53 at bats, 12 runs, 16 hits, two homers, five RBIs, batted 302. Roberto Clemente, thanks for your services. Number 33, Larry Walker. Larry Walker played in eight games, 32 at bats, 10 runs, 13 hits, five homers, 16 RBIs, batted 406. Larry Walker, I remember when he first came up in Boston, he had a span of like four homers in two games in Boston. Really slowed down after that, but he was still very, very good. Larry Walker, thanks for your services. Onto the starting pitchers, number one, 99 overall, Rube Foster. Rube Foster went 3-0. Pitched 20 and two-thirds innings, didn't walk anybody, struck out 34, so a 34 to zero strikeout walk ratio, ERA of 1.31. I mean, Rue Foster was dominant. All my pitchers were dominant. He's a 99 overall, and he played like it. Rube Foster, thanks for your services. Number 51, the big unit himself, Randy Johnson. Randy Johnson, dominant. 3-0, 24 innings pitched, walked one batter, struck out 35, an ERA of 0.75. I mean, Randy Johnson, when he was on the mount, he was absolutely unhittable. Dominant by Randy Johnson. Won a full game. I mean, I mean, this guy is, I mean, he was too good, man. Randy Johnson was my first pick at pitcher, and man, oh man, did he show it. With a 0 0.75 ERA, thanks for your services, Randy Johnson. Starting pitcher number 48, Jacob DeGrom. Jacob DeGrom went 2-0, pitched 14 innings, had 11 strikeouts, an ERA of 1.29. Walked one batter, struck out 11. Jacob DeGrom was another one of those guys that when he was on the mound, he was dominant. Didn't pitch as many innings as the other two. That's because he only pitched in two games. So seven strong innings, both games. Jacob DeGrom, thanks for your services. Starting pitcher number 45, Zach Wheeler. Zach Wheeler went 2-1, 22 innings pitched, struck out 21, had an ERA of 4.5. He did not walk anybody. Zach Wheeler was really not pitching well until that final game where he absolutely showed out in his final game. Nine innings pitched, only one run, four hits, 11 strikeouts. Thanks for your services, Zach Wheeler. And last but not least, starting pitcher number 22, Clayton Kershaw. Clayton Kershaw went 1-0, 16 innings pitched, 16 strikeouts, didn't walk anybody, struck out 16, had an ERA of 7.31. By far my worst pitcher, but again, he got me a win. So Clayton Kershaw, thanks for your services. I'll go over my relief pitchers real quick. Satchel Page, no saves, no wins, but five innings pitched. No walks, eight strikeouts, ERA of 1.80. Satchel Page, thanks for your services. Number 27, Juan Marichal, three innings pitched, one walk, four strikeouts, ERA at three. Thanks for your services, Juan Marichal. Finally, Trevor Hoffman, 2.1 innings pitched, no, no walks, two strikeouts, ERA at zero. Thanks for your services, Trevor Hoffman. I didn't know I had so many closing pitchers. I thought these were all just relief pitchers, and Edwin Diaz was my main close guy. But Ryan Helmsley got a win, 1-0, 1.2 innings pitched. Didn't walk anybody, two strikeouts. Camilo DeVell only pitched him in one-third of an inning. Didn't strike out anybody. ERA is zero. Everybody has an ERA is zero except Ryan Helmsley, who really got rocked his first day. I, mean, I remember when I first put him in, this guy was awful. But luckily, bounced back the next game for a win. P. Fairbanks pitched three innings, two strikeouts, no walks. Evan Phillips, one inning pitched, no walks, three strikeouts. And Edwin Diaz got a save, three innings pitched, five strikeouts. He was the dominant guy. Every time I needed to close out a game, Edwin Diaz was the guy. So thanks for your services to all those guys, all the pitchers. Thanks for your services. I could not have done that without dominant pitching. And that is going to do it. The big thing, I mean, look at the walk to strikeout ratio. I did not walk very many, many batters at all. Relief pitchers had one walk, Juan Marichal. Starting pitchers, only two walks. That's just bonkers, man. But that's going to be it. Mariners win the World Series. I'm now going to turn it back onto the TV. My phone is almost dead. So I'm going to plug it in, sit on the bed. Probably, I don't even know what time it is. It's 2.13, so I'm going to sit on the bed until around 2.45. Not edit any vlogs or anything. Just kind of sit around, relax. And then at 2.45, I'm going to go out to the computer Make the practice bets for today. Ladies and gentlemen, it is 219. I just got word. The Thundermans return. The new spin-off series. The original cast members are coming back. The Thundermans is not done yet. 
New series with all the same characters? Oh, sign me up. I love the Thundermans Return. If you, you can, I mean, you can go back in the previous vlog. Remember when the Thundermans came on? How excited I was. And when the Thundermans Return, I said in that vlog that it didn't feel like an ending. And it's not. Thundermans ain't done quite yet. Oh, I'm excited. Excited. So excited. So excited. Gonna keep sitting here about 20 minutes. Turn it to, what did I, I don't even know what I turned it to. Impractical Jokers, the old one. From 2013. I'm just gonna sit here, let my phone charge, and then I'll go out there, like I said. All right, it's 3:12. I just moved out to the living room. I was in my room longer than I said I was gonna be. I was letting my phone charge a little bit. I turned it on after I watched a little bit of Impractical Jokers, and then I just was watching the PGA Championship for about 25, 30 minutes. But now, time to make some practice bets. Just moved out. There's, there's like five. There's only like five games today. They all start at 4:40. Mariners do not play. Turn it to MLB tonight because there's really nothing on. Going to watch this until, well, as long as it takes me to get these practice bets done. All right, it's 3.57. I just got done making the practice bets out in the living room. I was watching MLB Network. I'm now going to play some MLB. I was, I do, I was wondering something. Could I play a full season mode but with this all-star team or is it only that? Like, I, what I was wondering is, like, can you go and, like, okay, I want to play a, a, a full, like, Let's see, where would it be? It would be just a, um, I don't even know, franchise. Can I be a franchise and have all, like, legends? This was the first game I was on. I bet I'm much better now. Much better. I bet I could win this game. I have greatly improved since I first started this game. Julio gets a double, then he tags up to third, and then RBI single brings him in. I mean, I could just save this, I guess. Confirm save. I want to see now, actually, if you can um, do that. Because I would love it. Okay, am I not going to be able to? Can you only do one franchise mode? Or can you not do a new one? Because it's going right back to this again. I simulated the game, and of course I lose. Now, can I not... Can I somehow, like, not do this right now? Or is it not possible to do a new one? Aha, there we go. Start new. Current... I don't think I'm allowed to do a fantasy roster for Francis, which is kind of disappointing because it'd be so fun having a full season instead of just rather, instead of just playing the postseason constantly. Fantasy draft. I don't know if that's like Hall of Fame allow non-active free agents. Yeah, non-active would be right. Maybe I can. I don't know. Let's see. Advance. Let's see if it is. If it's like actually, it is. Oh, yeah, here we go. Since there's more teams, I'm not going to be able to get as nine, like all 99s like I normally do. But I'm about to play a full season with a 99. Oh, this is going to be fun. All right, it's 416. Just got done with the fantasy draft. I drafted 40 rounds. I thought that was all there was going to be. No, I looked. There was like 90 rounds. So I was like, you know what? I got my all my players already. So I just simulated the rest of the draft. So that's why I got a lot of these random like Levi Stout. I got played for the Mariners. But since there's 32 teams, I was only able to get 499 overalls. There's my starting pitchers. Rue Foster was my only 99 overall. Relief pitcher, not bad. Kenley Jansen, only closing pitcher I got. Catcher, I mean, I don't have all 99s anymore. It's weird. Joe Tor, 92. That's my main catcher. Willie Stargell, I think that was a steal to get him. 98 overall. Got Joe Morgan again, 99 overall. Third baseman, Chipper Jones, 91 overall. Ozzy Smith, 89 overall. Left fielder, I made sure to get Ricky Henderson, 99 overall with his speed. Center fielder, got Aaron Judge. And then right fielder, Larry Walker, 88 overall. And that's all. Rube Foster, Ricky Henderson, Aaron Judge, Joe Morgan. And then I'll throw in Will Willie Stargell as well. Those are my best players. Everybody beneath that's 92 overall. So when you play postseason, it's only during night. So I'm going to be playing during the day, and that seems to never be the case. Make sure it's clear skies. Unless, of course, it's a night game, which it very well could be. There's my lineup. This is going to be weird. Boston's got a lot of legends on their team. They got Onus Wagner on their team. Boston and Seattle. Game one of the season. It's just getting dark. And this is going to be the lineup. I put Julio in a Boston jersey. That just doesn't seem right. Well, that one hurts. Onus Wagner hit a triple, and it's one nothing Boston. This already feels a whole lot different. I don't know why. It feels like the energy is just gone. It's like this game one of the series. I don't think I'm going to be playing this for very long. All right, it's 426. I only played one inning. I don't think I'm ever going to play that game mode again. It's just, 
it just lacks the fun. I don't know why. If it's like, I think the postseason is fun because it's like there's something on the line. Like if I lose this game, then it's like, I better, I mean, I, I obviously haven't lost any games, but it's like, what if, I don't know. It's just like, it's like a full season. I have a lot of 89s on my team. It's just like, I don't want to spend all my time playing that game mode. It's just, it's just not as fun, honestly. I'd much rather just keep playing postseason mode. So I think later, probably not today, um, I'm going to get a postseason, new postseason mode going because that mode just not as fun. So I only played one inning, went three up, three down. I was like, this is just not very fun. So I'm going to sit here. I turned on Sports Center, as you can see. I'm going to sit here probably till like 5.15. Nobody's back yet again, which I don't know where everybody's at. Don't know what for dinner today. Just going to sit here, 5.15. Continue to edit that vlog. I have to have my YouTube app open, so that's why I can't really don't know what to do. And the vlog's taking a very long time. Just keep watching Sports Center, I guess. Tiger Woods isn't even projected to make the cut plus 225? I thought he was doing good all day. All right, it's 512. Just moved into the bedroom. Watching the Phillies Mets game. Mets are up 2 nothing. I guess I'll sit here for 35 more minutes until 545. Then I'll take a shower. There's still nobody here. And I know everybody said they're going to get home late. Oh, you know what I need to do? While I'm in here, I have to cut out some things that my mom wanted me to. So while I am in here, I'm going to cut those stuff out. While I wait, watch the Mets game. That's what I'll do in here. Because I have to cut out a ton of pictures. I, I Let me show you real quick. I'm supposed to cut out all these pictures and stuff. So there's a lot of them. So I saw, I told my mom I would do it. So I guess that means I have to do it. So while I'm sitting in here for like 35 minutes, unless of course somebody comes home and makes something. But right now, it's a very dark day outside. No sun to be seen anywhere. It's been dark all day long. Just gonna keep watching the Mets game while I cut these stuff out. All right, it's 5.30. Just got done cutting everything out. Uh, what I'm now gonna do is go make a chocolate fudge Pop-Tart. Uh, come back in here, eat that. Actually, uh, I'm gonna take... What do I, I don't even know what to do. What do I do? <laughs> I have no clue what to do right now. Do I take a shower now? You know what? I'm probably... You know what? I'm gonna go take a shower now, and then once I get out, I'll make a chocolate fudge Pop-Tart. You know, I'll only make a chocolate fudge Pop-Tart in the night. I'm not going to make it now. What's probably going to happen is I'll probably take a shower now. I mean, I will take a shower now. And then once I get out, I mean, if they're still not back, I'll go to the computer. If they are back, I'll go into my room for an hour and a half. It all depends if they're going to be back or not. All right, it's 6.08. I just got out of the shower. They are still not back. I have absolutely no clue where everybody's at today. I know they're going to get home late, but I didn't know it was going to be this late. I mean... I'm not gonna be able to eat anything for dinner today, so I guess I just have a ton of snacks or whatever. Like I said though, I'm gonna sit here on the computer maybe 20, 30 minutes, and then I'll go back into my room for the next 30 minutes. I don't know. This is exactly why I never watch NBA Countdown. Game starts in 13 minutes. I just turned it on because it's supposed to start at 6.30. That's when the Nuggets game starts. So, so I was like, hey, let's turn the Nuggets game on. And the first thing I see is they're talking about LeBron James and the Lakers at the bottom. I just can't get enough of the Lakers. Here we go. Denver and Minnesota. I'm now going to move to my room for the next 30 minutes, and then I'll make popcorn at 7, get the night started. Guys, it's 6.33. I don't understand it. The Lakers do not play, but yet I just looked at the next vlog. It's an hour and 13 minutes. What on earth am I recording for an hour and 13 minutes? How did I used to do vlogs that were like 9 minutes long, and now every vlog seems to be over 55, even when the Lakers are not playing? Well, it took me literally three and a half hours to do a 50 minute one today. Add 23 minutes, that's gonna be four hours and 30 minutes. So every moment I get, I'm not gonna, I, I don't, I learned something today. I do not care if I edit it all in one setting or not because I cannot edit a video that long in a row. I think I'll do like 30 minute intervals, 30 minutes, then take like a two hour break, 30 more minutes, two hour break, something like that because I cannot edit straight. I want 13 minutes, really? Here comes the NBA game. Gonna sit here another 26 minutes. Then I'll make popcorn. I have to listen to Stephen A. Smith again. No way. Turn back to the MLB game real quick. Mets, Phillies. The Mets or the Phillies finally scored. Game is now tied at two. They were down all game long. It's officially game time at 6:40. The only NBA game tonight. It's the Denver Nuggets and the Minnesota Timberwolves. If Denver wins this game on their road. They're moving on to the Western Conference Finals. If Minnesota keeps home court alive, they tie it up at 3-3 and force a game seven. It's the Timberwolves and the Nuggets. Nuggets won two games in this building already, so we'll see what happens. 
Nuggets have won three straight games after going down 0-2. May have figured something out. Let's do it. Nuggets. Timberwolves starts now. Right at 6.58. Sister just got back. Finally at 7 o'clock. Got my popcorn. Got my drink. Watching the Nuggets game. No more editing today. I was thinking about it, but you know. But just going to sit here watch the Timberwolves game. And enjoy it. Update you in the first quarter rounds. This is crazy. Denver went up 9-2. It's a 16-0 Timberwolves run. You see there at the bottom. 16-0 run. Make it 18-0 run. 18-0 run. Denver's collapsing right now. 18-0 run, really? It's 7-0-8. First quarter about to end. Minnesota dominating up 17. Edwards didn't get it off in time, and Minnesota leads by 17. They went on a 27-2 run before a Denver 3. Incredible performance right now by Minnesota, up by 17 after one. All right, it's 7.33 Minnesota, it's up by 21. My mom just got back and made the soup I was supposed to make. That's what the dinner is for today. I'm very hungry because I haven't eaten anything. Minnesota blowing out the Denver Nuggets. All right, it's 7.42 Denver's on a 7-0 run to make this score a little bit more manageable because it's been a blowout. Three for the Timberwolves, missed it. Rebound put back. It is good in the Minnesota Timberwolves are absolutely dominating, and they look like they want to force a game seven. I don't know if there's a hockey game on TV. There is. But if I just go, remember how I said I was watching the Mets game earlier? Game is tied at four. Unless, of course, they, they might have scored a run. I'm not sure. But while it's halftime, I'm going to watch this game. All right, it's 8-0-1. Just turn the Timberwolves game back on. Minnesota up by 19. Thanks for watching this game, and I'll update you again at 9 o'clock. Might have to turn it on to the hockey game, because this is not close at all. 74-48. to 48. Thanks for showing up, Denver. All right, it's 826. Timberwolves don't get the shot up. About the only thing the Timberwolves did not do right. 86-61, a 25-point lead for the Minnesota Timberwolves. There's going to be a Game 7 in Denver on Sunday. Denver has got 61 points through three quarters. Just haven't been able to do anything tonight. Timberwolves are doing it again. They're on a 22 nothing run. Make it 24. It's a 49-point lead for the Minnesota Timberwolves on a 24 nothing run. This is unbelievable. This is against the defending champs. The crowd ain't sitting down. Man, it's 856. The Minnesota Timberwolves, absolute dominant. 115-70, a 45-point win for the Minnesota Timberwolves. There'll be a Game 7 on Sunday, and man, is that going to be exciting. The second largest playoff win-facing elimination in NBA history. What on earth did we just witness? 45-point win? Are you kidding me? Game seven's going to be epic in Denver. That crowd's going to be going crazy. Winner go home. Winner heads to the Western Conference Finals. It's going to be a lot of fun on Sunday. I'm not going to turn on the hockey game. Oilers Canucks. Going to turn that on. First, I want to hear what they, they say. The Nuggets only scored nine points in the fourth quarter. Outscored 29 to nine. Man, there's the bracket. New York looks like they could play Boston. What a matchup that'll be. Dallas tomorrow has a chance to clinch. Be the number one seed. 115 to 70. Jeez, not even remotely close. I'm going to watch the Oilers Canucks game till 10. And then I'll go to my room and watch the news. 10.24, just moved my bed. Listening to party favorites. Long way home. Noah Neiman, J Bombay. This song's epic. The beat. I'm going to listen to this song and then turn the news on. Watch Found at 10.35. All right, it's 10.34. Here comes Jimmy Found, as I usually do. I'll just let the intro play and you'll see who he has on. Gonna watch this as usual. Same schedule to end the night. One hour and then 11.35. Shut the TV up and that'll be that. That's who he's got on tonight. Peso Pluma's gonna talk and perform. So I have no clue who that is, but Drew Barrymore is the main guest. Bring him out, Jimmy Fallon, for one hour. Let's go. All right, it's 11.35 as usual. Gonna turn the TV off now. Jimmy Fallon is ending. Hope you enjoyed this vlog. See you tomorrow.